Hey everyone, this is Kathy from KDL Handmade and I wanted to welcome you to my video tutorial for the Ellie bucket bag. I really think that you're going to like the features that are included. Um, so let me go ahead and show you what the bag is. So this is one of the versions that you can make. It has grommets with O-ring connectors on the side with this split panel accent piece going right down the side and then you have the accent base as well. On the top you have a large snap pocket cover and then inside you have two large divide or two large pockets with this center divider pocket. Let me see if I can show it to you. There we go. A center divider pocket, a zipper pocket, and then on this side you also have another zipper pocket. So you can make this bag, like I said, there are several options provided in the pattern. You can make this bag with the center accent piece going down the middle. There's also measurements provided to make one with the base. And then I just did the coordinating cork base for this one. So you can do it with a separate accent piece on the base. You could also do it as one main, um, you know, one panel. You don't have to separate it. And then you just have the accent base on the bottom there. So there are several options. I think this would be a great option too if you wanted to add some kind of embroidery, um, patchwork, uh, applique, anything like that. Um, you could even do a shaker panel, for instance, with this one down the center, that could be the shaker panel. So there's lots of options with this one. And also if you have struggles with um, installing grommets, it is not provided for in the pattern, but you always could skip the grommet and install a strap connector right here on the side and then just attach your your um, strap connectors the same way. So that's always an option. I like to um, give many options with my patterns and make them more of just kind of like a jumping off point um, to give you guys some ideas on some things that you can do and then just kind of give you the blueprint and the framework to just go let your create creativity flow and then make it your own. So this is the Ellie bucket bag. It's my new pattern and I hope you really enjoy it and I hope you have fun making it. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this video tutorial and we'll go over everything we need to do. Okay, so let's start by going over the pieces that we're going to need to make um, the Ellie bucket bag. So you're gonna have two main pieces here and I have done my two pieces using the Bling Your Bag page in the pattern so that I can divide it and put the center strip down the middle. You may have a solid piece, or if you're doing another version, you may have a top and bottom piece, but you will have two finished pieces that are this size. That will be your main outer. You will also have two main lining pieces. You will have two pieces that will be your, I'm calling the snap cover, which is the piece in the middle that, that closes your bag from the inside. So I'm using vinyl here. This will be the raw edge version. There is also a woven version, and I will talk about that when we get to making this part in the pattern. You will have a base, and I'm using this blue vinyl for my base. For the inside, you will have, for the center divider pocket, there is an exterior and an interior piece for the pocket. So I'm using the exterior for the bag as my outside for the center divider pocket. I think that'll look really neat. So you can do that if you have the type of material that would work. I'm using vinyl here, so I'm not using any interfacing, and I think that'll be just, just perfect. Um, you could also use cotton woven, canvas, anything like that for this piece. Then you will have the two inside pieces, and they are smaller. This is, again, for that center divider pocket. 
Then you will have a center zipper pocket piece. And I'm just using cotton woven interfaced on the back. There is an optional interfacing piece if you wanted to add a little bit of extra structure to the back of your zipper when you're installing the, the zipper here. You will have some zipper tabs. And this is going to be for the inside, um, the center divider pocket. These will be the tabs on the side of the zipper. There are four of those. I'm going to also show an option to use vinyl. So if you wanted to do that, the measurement is a little bit smaller because the um, installation is a little different. So I'm going to show that when we get there. You will also need, in terms of hardware, I have two one and a half inch grommets, or uh, O-rings, I should say. And let me just show these O-rings have like a little carabiner piece, so you can open like this. That'll make it real easy to install. Two one inch um, lobster clasps from attaching my strap. I also have a one inch adjustable slider bar, and that will be for the strap. Let me just pull that out. There we go, there's my adjustable slider bar. And then for the center um, snap cover, I'm calling it, you will need two snaps, and I'm using mag magnetic snaps here for mine. So this, these are all the pieces stuck together <laughs> for the two snaps. And then you will have your length of strap webbing. I made this strap webbing using my vinyl pieces, so I have this on the outside and then the solid blue will be the underside of my strap. So you can use strap webbing or you can make your own strap. And then you will need two zippers. There are two measurements with matching zipper pulls. You can use whatever pulls you want. This one with the heart, that's the shorter length zipper and that's the one that I'm going to be using for the center divider pocket. And then this longer one with just a plain zipper pull is going to be the side zipper pocket. And that's where we're going to be turning the bag through. So it is up to you um, if you want those to match or if you want them to be different. And then the last two things we're going to need are grommets. So these are 5 8 inch center opening grommets. And they are the screw on type. So there's three screws on the back. There are, are also force fit grommets that you could use if you prefer that style. Whichever style really works best for you, um, then use that style. <laughs> really, it's, it's I, I want this pattern to be easy and fun to make. So if you have a style of hardware or something that you prefer better that you find makes it easier for you or more enjoyable for you to make this bag and to use this bag, then by all means, please do that. This I just wanted to give you as, this is how I make this bag, but it really, it's more of a jumping off point to give you ideas and, and things on how you can customize the bag to make it exactly how you want. All right, so with all that said, let's go ahead and get started on some prep work. All right, so the first thing we're going to work on is the strap. And regardless if you are using a strap that you made or, or if you are using um, pre-made strap webbing, the construction is the same. So you will do the same for um, whichever method or whichever style strap that you have. But what you want to do is you want to take one of your ends of your strap, and I'm going to take my center bar and I'm going to push it up and then over so that slider bar is in the middle and it's up and over and I'm going to push it down here. Now with this part, this is probably overlapped maybe an inch and a half or so. You could sew a box around here. You could install a couple rivets. Um, whichever method you prefer to secure this, we are going to secure this uh, now. So I'm going to add a couple rivets here. And if you want to do that, or if you want to add some stitching, go ahead and do that. And then um, I'll be back to show the rest. Okay, so my 
rivets are installed and I added an additional row of stitching just right here between the two rivets just to help give it a little bit extra strength and secure it. So that part is good. Now what you want to do is you want to come to the other end of your strap. Make sure it's not twisted. You're going to put your strap hardware on your lobster clasp. So you want it hanging down. So you want the flat part of the bar on the underside of your strap. And then again, making sure you don't twist it. We're going to come to the adjuster bar again. We're going to push it up. So this is the underside. We're going to push it up and then through the other side. Just like that. So your strap will look like this. Bring your hardware down. You can double check to make sure that your strap is not twisted. And mine looks good. I'm just gonna leave it this short for now. We will adjust it later once we put it on the bag. But now coming to the other end of the strap, you're gonna do the same thing here. You're going to fold this over, stitch a row of, or stitch a box, add a couple of rivets, add a stitch row. Optionally, you can also put a strap end hardware piece on this strap here to close that off. Um, I'm going to do that since this one will be seen. I won't do it on this one because it's on the underside of the bag and it's going to be sandwiched between the straps. So you're not really going to see that. But this one, I will put the strap end on. And again, that's optional. You don't have to do that. So I'll install the two rivets, add a row of stitching and add the strap and hardware. Okay, so that end of the strap is attached. I added the two rivets, the row of stitching in the middle, and then I added the strap and hardware here at this end. Okay, so at this point, your adjustable strap is completed and we can set this to the side and move on to um, the additional prep work that we need to do for the main pieces. Okay, so for your main outer panel A and your lining panel C, there are measurements in the pattern instructions and it tells you how much to cut out of each bottom corner. So you're going to mark that on the bottom corners of both of your lining panels and the bottoms of both of your main exterior panels. And we're just gonna cut those four corners out. Okay, and then the same on the backs of the main exterior panels. I've already measured and drawn the lines, so you're just going to cut those out. Okay, once you get those cut out, your main exterior and your two main lining panels are prepared and we are ready to move on to creating the center divider pocket. All right, so to create the center divider pocket, we are going to need pieces F. So there is an exterior and a lining for that. There's two of those. F1, which are your zipper tabs, and I have two options here I'll show you. And then you will also need your zipper and the, the length of zipper is provided in the pattern instructions. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to attach these tabs to both ends of the zipper. So if you're using the woven version, you're going to place the fabric right sides together with the zipper tape. So it'll be right sides down on top and then right sides down underneath. Then you're going to stitch along this edge here at a quarter inch seam allowance, press both pieces back and then top stitch along that folded edge. And you'll do that for both sides. I am going to be using this blue vinyl. So I'm going to kind of do it all in one <laughs> for this step. So what I'm going to do is I cut mine shorter and I'm just going to sew at a quarter inch, fold it under or fold it back over and then fold this part under like this and then I will top stitch. Now optionally, if I 
that's if I don't care about this part. I don't want to say don't care, but I could also just fold it in half like this, and that takes out some of that bulk, but you will see a little bit of that raw edge right there, which because I have other raw edge pieces in this pattern, that doesn't bother me at all. So I'm going to do that because it's going to cut down on the bulk in that zipper, and I'm going to do that to both sides of my zipper panel. So I'll just fold it over. I'll cut off probably about um, half of an inch here, and then I will just sandwich this zipper between the zipper end and then top stitch along this edge right here. All right, so there is my zipper with the ends attached on both sides. I'm gonna set that to the side. And then what I wanna do is grab my two main panels here. What we're going to do is we're going to come to the back and we're going to measure one inch in and up from each corner. And then we're going to draw a diagonal line and we're gonna cut that corner off. So we're doing this along the bottom edges only. If you have non-directional fabric, um, you don't have to worry about that. But if you do have directional fabric, just make sure you're doing that along the bottom edge. So again, we're measuring in one inch on both sides. And then we're gonna draw that diagonal line and trim the corner off. I'm going to do that to the other panel as well. Okay, so now grabbing one of your exterior pocket panels, we're going to take our zipper and we're going to lay it down. I'm going to have my zipper open and close to the left and we're going to lay it down centered. Now, if you have the zipper tab, the fabric version, yours will hang off the side of the, of the um, bag here, and that's totally fine. If you're doing the version like I am, we're just gonna clip it in place. You wanna make sure that it's centered so you have the same distance on each side. Here at the sides, you want to measure to make sure it's the same distance. And I think mine is a little bit, let's see here. Nope, that's pretty good. Must just be the illusion of the flower making me think it's a little bit off. Okay, so now you're going to grab one of your lining panels. So this is piece F, the lining side, and we're going to place it down right sides down on top of that. So again, your main exterior piece is right side up. Your zipper is right side down, so teeth side down. And then your lining panel is right side down. Then we're gonna to top stitch, not top stitch, just regular stitch all the way across here according to the seam allowance in the pattern. Okay, once that is sewn together, we're going to press both panels away from the zipper. And I'm going to add a couple clips here just to help hold it in place, just along that top side edge there. So we're pressing this away from the zipper and then we are going to, let me just make sure my lining is Laying nice and flat. And you can see the lining is shorter than the exterior, and that's exactly what we want. That's exactly right. Okay, so now I'm just going to top stitch right along this folded edge at 1 8 inch seam allowance. And then we're going to repeat the exact same steps for the other side. So with that right side up, zipper right side down, and then attaching this panel, stitch it, flip those away from the zipper, and top stitch. 
All right, so once you have both sides attached and top stitched, now we're going to open the zipper to the center and we're going to take the two exteriors and we're going to match up this angled corner down here. Just put a couple clips to hold that. Same on the other side, we're going to match up the other angled corner and add a couple clips. And then on the other side, we are matching up the lining all the way across the bottom here. Okay, now we're going to take that to the sewing machine. We're going to stitch across this whole straight bottom here, and we're going to stitch across these two angled corners only. So according to the seam allowance in the instructions, across the lining, all the way across the bottom, and then just across these two angled corners here. Okay, so once that is stitched, now I'm just going to use my scissors and cut back the seam allowance on this side by about half. Okay, and now we're going to turn it through. Okay, pressing it nice and flat. You wanna pull out these corners here. Pull out these corners. Now your lining panel, your pocket panel, should match up exactly, it should fit perfectly right inside where this angled corner is. And I'm just going to match up these seams here at the top and add a couple clips to hold this in place here. Okay, same thing on the other side matching up that seam at the top and then you can see the pocket ends right there so that's perfect that's exactly what we want and then clipped on this side okay now our last step here is we need to top stitch these bottom angles right here you don't have to um, do any more if you don't want to however if you wanted to baste the sides and baste across the bottom you definitely could do that um, but the only required step here is to top stitch along these um, angled edges here okay so i basted all the way around i just used my top stitch length and i went down across all the way and just did one across all three sides and then the two angled corners okay now we are done with the pocket and we are ready for the next step okay so we are going to start on the interior lining panels now the first one we are going to do is the zipper side as the other side lining panel doesn't have any uh, pockets to it so we don't have to worry about that <laughs> so you're going to need your one um, lining panel with your corners cut out you will need your optional facing piece if you're gonna add that. You will need your other zipper, and then you will need your lining pocket piece. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to take our facing, we're going to center it, and there is a measurement in the, in the instructions for how far down you want to measure that. We are going to draw a zipper box here around the center, um, and then we'll stitch it and cut it out. But first step here is to find the center. So I'm just going to fold my facing in half, fold the lining in half, give it a little finger press. That way I can see where the center is and it matches up perfectly. I'm going to mark the measurement off camera and then I will also draw the box and then I'll show you what our next step is going to be. Okay, so here is our zipper box. If you wanted to add a couple pins, uh, straight pins, let me just grab those real quick. You can just attach those to your panel here, and that will help the facing to stay in place while you're stitching. 
So once you have your box marked, we're going to stitch all the way around this box. I would suggest using a smaller stitch length um, and then try to be as careful as you can in the corners. You don't want to have, you know, if you're stitching here and you come around and your other stitch, you don't want it to go further up because that's going to add a pucker right there in that corner. So if you're close, you could just stop, maybe do a back stitch or hand crank it so that you get it exactly in that same spot. And that will give you nice, crisp, clean corners. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch this and then I'll we'll be ready to cut it out. Okay, so there's my zipper box stitched all the way around. I'm going to remove the straight pins. Now, one thing before we move on to the next step, I just wanted to clarify. I know that I say that this is optional. Um, I prefer using it this way because it, I just feel like it gives the um, zipper a little bit extra strength and stability. But if you wanted to skip this, if you didn't want to do this part, you could just do the same with your zipper pocket. You could put that there, draw the line on, stitch it that way, because we're going to end up pushing it through, and that will create the um, pocket on the inside. But uh, this is just the way that I prefer. So that's the way we're doing it. <laughs> All right, so now what we need to do is we need to cut a line down the center. Now, you could draw a line. I'm just going to draw this line to show you what we're going to be doing. Um, but you want to cut right down the center and then maybe, I don't know, half of an inch to three quarters of an inch away from the ends. You're going to stop and you're going to cut out to each corner, trying to get in as close as you can to the corner without cutting your stitch lines. Now you can use whatever method you prefer to do this. I usually use my rotary cutter to cut the line in the middle and then I'll come back in with my scissors and cut up to the corner. And like I said, you want to try and get as close as you can into the corner because that's going to help everything to lay nice and flat once you turn it through. Just be careful you don't cut your stitches. If you do happen to cut your stitch line, You'll just have to go back and stitch over it again before you turn it through. Okay, so once you have that cut, now we are going to push this facing through the hole. And this can be a little tricky, but you just work it. And it will come through. Now one option you could do, and actually I'll show you that now because um, it could make it a little bit easier as you're trying to do this here. You could put a little bit of double-sided tape right along that stitch line and then removing the paper backing. When you pull this through, you're still within your seam allowance. So it's going to help hold. It's going to help hold that fold like that. And let me do it on this side too. It might might be a little hard to see still. I am going to take this to the iron once I get it all through and pressed the way that I want it to, but the sticky tape, the double-sided tape, will help to hold it in place until you can get to the iron. All right, I'm going to add one more piece, a little bit higher on this one. Oops. I was wondering what was poking me. <laughs> That's my straight pin. <laughs> it got stuck to the sticky tape. Okay, there we go. All right, so that is actually looking pretty good even before I pressed it. Now, turning it through, you can take a look and see, do you have any weird bumps or um, puckerings in the corner? And I don't. The one thing I do have is a little bit of a wonky line, but that's how it's, that's what happens when you're working with stripes. <laughs> okay, so I'll give this a press at the ironing board and then we'll be ready to attach our zipper. 
Okay, so now we are ready for working on the zipper pocket itself. So you're going to take your lining panel and your zipper and line it up here along the top edge. And it should be the same length as your zipper. Okay, once you get it clipped on, we are going to stitch at one eighth of an inch away from that edge. So we just really are just basting it on. We just want to cut, or not cut, stitch right up to that edge. Once we get that done, we're going to flip it over. We're going to take the other raw edge of the zipper, attach it to this end of the lining panel, and baste that on as well. Okay, once you have both pieces basted on, this is what it's gonna look like. You're gonna have this little tube with the zipper right sides up. And it might look a little strange, but this is exactly what we want. So now we're going to flip the zipper. So with the open and close here to the left, we're going to press everything up, up and away from the zipper. So we want this to lay as flat as possible and you can take it to the iron and just give it a little press if you want to really make sure it's going to lay flat. And then we're going to add some double-sided tape along each long edge. Okay, and then removing the paper backing, we're going to take our main piece with the interfacing and we're going to I'm just eyeballing it so I have about the same amount of overhang on each side and I'm just centering the zipper tape in the box so I know it might look a little wonky because my stripe is a little wonky right here but it is centered so now once you have that in you like how it's laying you can tell I have about the same amount of zipper overhang on each side, so that's good. Now we're just going to top stitch along the bottom edge only. You can start and stop, do a couple tack stitches at the beginning and at the end of your stitch line, or optionally you can leave long strings and then pull them through to the back side and tie them off. For this one, I'm just gonna do some back stitching at the beginning and at the end. All right, so that is stitched on. It might be hard to see because it's pretty much right in that black line right there. <laughs> but now we're going to take our panel, we're going to turn it over, and we're going to flip our pocket panel down towards the center or down towards the bottom of that panel. And you might want to pull it to make sure you don't, because what you don't want to happen is you don't want anything to be bunched up here when you go to sew because then your pocket's going to be all wonky on the inside. So just kind of give it a nice pull. Make sure it's nice and flat and then flipping it over to the other side. Now we are going to finish the box. So we're going to stitch up the side along the top and down the other side. Again, either doing start and stop stitches or leaving long tails and pulling it through. All right, now that that is stitched all the way around, our zipper in pocket, or lining, pocket lining is nice and secure to our bag. We're gonna flip it around to the back side, and now we are just going to cut open this bottom seam. So let's see, how can I do this? Here, I'll do it this way. I'm just pulling it nice and flat. So now both panels will be the same length. Like that. I'm gonna flip it back over to this side, pull my exterior panel away, and I'm going to top stitch, not top stitch. I always say that, top stitch. What I really mean, just stitch. We're just gonna stitch down the side, doing a couple back stitches here at the end because we are going to be turning this bag through this pocket. So we wanna make sure that it is strong and secure at this end and it doesn't start to pull away as we're working the bag through the opening. Same on this side, you're gonna pull it away and then you're gonna stitch 
straight down here. Again, a couple back stitches here at the bottom edge. And then, like I said, we will leave the bottom open because that's what we're going to be turning the bag through. All right, stitched on both sides, secured at the bottom. The last thing we have to do here is attach our top band. So taking one of your top bands, and I'm trying to see, I think this is the right way up, we need to attach it to the top. So we're going to flip it down, right sides together. I'm going to be adding this little woven label, which is my logo. Um, I am just going to clip it in place here. So if you want to add some sort of woven label, you can add that here. And then we're just going to clip it in place straight across the top. Okay, once it's clipped in place, we are going to stitch according to the seam allowance. Then we are going to press this panel up and away and then top stitch along this folded edge. There is our completed panel with the top band attached. Um, there is my little woven label and I've top stitched it. Now the last thing we need to do is attach the snaps. Okay, so we are going to be attaching the male side of the snap, which is it's kind of the flatter piece and it has the little part, the button that pokes out there. So we're gonna need those two pieces and our two washers. The rest we can put aside for now. We'll do that in a second. All right, so what I did was I had already marked the two spots on here where I'm going to be installing the snap. And the measurements for that are provided in the pattern instructions on exactly where you want those to go. So what I'm doing is I'm taking that little dot that I made using the washer as a template and I'm just making the slit marks. I'm also going to be using some heavy stabilizer. This is Peltex. You could also use um, Decoville Heavy or any other firm stabilizer that you have. Um, this is not required, but I highly recommend it because it's going to give your snap some strength and support because this is where the cover is going to be attaching. So every time you go in and out of your bag, you're gonna need, or it's gonna have a little bit of pressure there. So I definitely recommend giving it some sort of stabilizer just to, just to help it out. Because the last thing you want is for your bag after you've been working on it and you're in love with it and it's so beautiful. You don't want your bag to be starting to fall apart or ripping as you're using it. That would be very sad. <laughs> okay, so once I make the little slip marks here, I'm going to take the male side of the snap, push it through the hole. I'm just going to do both at the same time. Flipping it over to the back side. Next up goes the stabilizer. And then we're going to put the washer on top. And then making sure it's pressed down nice and flat, we're going to push those prongs out. Okay, and then usually I'll just kind of give them a nice extra press just to make sure they're not poking up at all. I want them nice and flat or even maybe a little bit pressed in towards towards the, the down part, I guess, <laughs> um, if that makes sense. Then the last thing I'm going to do is add a piece of duct tape right over the top and that's just going to cover that and protect any fabric or any part of my bag that is up against this it's going to protect it from wear and tear from the snap hardware okay well, there we go our snaps are attached 
zipper is attached, and now we are done with this panel for now. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is make our internal snap cover. So that is pattern piece E. We're going to take both of those, and on the back side of one of them, there is a measurement marked in the pattern instructions where you're going to mark the spots where you're going to install the other half of the snaps. So I will talk through while I'm <laughs> while I'm installing these, I will talk through um, the options that you have here. So this one here that I'm doing is a raw edge version. And so that would be anything like vinyl or cork. Um, so I'm using vinyl here, so I am following the instructions for the raw edge version. Now, if you are making a woven version, because some people just do not like raw edge projects, and that's completely okay. If you're using the woven version, you're going to still have two pieces. You're gonna have all your snaps, you're gonna have your interface or your uh, stabilizers here, but your measurements are going to be different. So your pieces need to account for the seam allowance. So there is measurements and a pattern piece in the instructions for what to make or what size to make that for. Also the measurements for where you're going to install the snaps are different because again, you're accounting for the, um, the uh, seam allowance. So once you um, get your pieces cut out, if you have the woven version, we're doing the exact same thing right now. You're just going to mark on the back of one of your woven pieces according to the instructions where you want your snaps to be. And I will say one quick tip before you cut the holes. Once you make those dots, I will grab my lining piece and I will hold that up. I want to make sure those dots line up with the snaps because then I know my snaps are going to match in the final instruction in the final construction so that's just one little um tip if you want to make sure before you like i said before you cut the holes <laughs> and sew everything together only to um, try to close up your bag and find out that your snaps don't match up um, again that would be so frustrating so please just take that little extra second double check to make sure that your markings are correct and that your measurements, everything lines up nice. All right, so again, if you're following along with the raw edge version or the woven version, these steps right now, these are all the same. You're just going to press your snap pieces through through those slits you made, flip it over, put your interfacing on, put your washer on, and then press those prongs out to the side. Again, making sure they're pressed down nice and flat all the way. And then again, a small piece of duct tape. Just to cover that. And I'm making my duct tape a little bit smaller here because I want to keep it out of the seam allowance. I don't want my needle to run over it because it's going to get all gummed up and sticky. Okay, now I will say um, I have the female side of the snaps here. I actually think the instructions, I have them going the other way, where these are on the lining panel, and then the, the male side is on this side. It really doesn't matter. Um, just make sure whatever you do, it's it's the same for both. You know what I mean? Like, so you don't have a male and a female. Um, just have either the two males or the two females here, and then the other ones on your lining panel. Okay, so now here's where it differs if you're using woven or raw edge. If you're using woven, you're going to take your two pieces and lay them right sides together. And then you are going to stitch around these three edges. So leaving the side open, 
you're stitching around the bottom here where the snap is and up the sides. Then you're going to trim the corners after you get it stitched, turn this whole thing through so then it'll be right sides out and then you're going to top stitch along these three edges. You can base stitch along the top if you just want to close it up, um, but that is how the instructions will differ. You'll just top stitch along these. Now if you're doing the raw edge like I am, we don't have to do any of that turning through. So I'm just going to clip in place here. And then we're just going to top stitch. You don't have to worry about trying to turn this through. Okay, and I will say, um, when you're top stitching with the snaps up, this is going to be the outside or the top side of the bag. Um, I know it might seem a little different because usually our snaps are underneath, but this is going to be installed like this in our bag. And so that is going to be the side that we see. So I'm going to top stitch with the snaps up and then I'm going to add a couple additional rows of top stitching down the middle. That's totally optional. I'm going to do it just, um, I think it looks really neat and it gives it a nice um, little extra design feature, but also it helps these two panels to stay together. So it's got kind of a secret double purpose. <laughs> so, all right, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna stitch all this together, stitch these lines down the middle, and then I'll be back to show the next step. All right, so here is my completed snap cover, top stitched. I went around and at the last step, just trimmed off the edges. If you are using raw edge material, you can do this as well if you want. Just be real careful, go real kind of fast and not get too close. Right there, I'm just singeing the ends, and that's just gonna help clean up any little um, little fuzzies or any little strings that were hanging off. Now, optionally, you could also edge paint that if you don't wanna leave it raw. I'm just going to leave mine raw for this bag. Um, so we are ready for the next step. All right, so we need to attach this now to our lining panel. So grabbing your remaining lining panel and lay that right sides up, Again, you're going to find the center. And then you want to find the center of your snap cover. And you're going to line that up, but then you want it to overhang by about, I would say maybe have it overhang by about a half of an inch to an inch somewhere in there. You just want to, you want to give it a little bit extra here so that um, you, you have extra. So when you're sewing the, the seam, seam allowances down and everything, it will give it a little extra strength to have a little bit extra here to, to grab onto, if that makes sense. Okay, so now you're going to take your remaining top band and you're going to lay it right sides down. Again, make sure that your snap cover is with snap sides up. And then you're going to lay, like I said, the top band down here and clip it in place. If you have, let me see if these will fit sometimes. I mean, they just barely, they just barely reach. If you have some long clips and you wanted to add some just to help make sure it holds. Um, you can do that. So now just like on the other one, we're going to top, or we're going to stitch straight across here, flip this panel up. But before we do that, um, I will come back because we want to actually flip this one up as well so that we have um, the this cover going in the direction that we want it to. Okay, so go ahead and just stitch this straight across and then come back here for the next step. All right, so once your panel is stitched, we're going to flip it up and then press the lining down away from 
that seam. So this is kind of opposite of what we did with um, the other panel where we top stitched along this band. On this one, we're going to be top stitching along this bottom edge. Now, if that bugs you, if you don't like having one top stitched here and one top stitched here, you could also do the other panel with this pressed down and then top stitch along the lining panel. Um, I don't think anybody's going to be noticing that much and it also helps the seams to nest when we go to match up the sides. So uh, to me this is just fine and um, it's the way that I like to construct the bag. Okay so we're going to top stitch along here and then we are ready to put all the lining panels together. All right, I just wanted to show you one last step that I did. This is optional, but remember how I said, if you press this down, it'll give it a little bit extra to hold on to. So I added a second row of stitching and it, it's right in this black line, so it's probably hard to see, but starting and stopping right here, just adding that second row of stitching, you can see it on the back here where it catches this little tab that's hanging over. And that's just going to, like I said, it's just going to give it a little bit of extra strength. Okay, now we are ready to put this all together. All right, so with this panel, we're going to leave this right sides up. You're going to grab your center divider pocket. We're going to align it at the bottom here. And actually, before I do that, let me just show you this, because I'm going to flip my pocket around and I want you to know why. When this one gets installed this zipper is on this side and i want these to be on the same side so if that matters to you double check that before you sew this on um otherwise that'll be super frustrating <laughs> once you get it through and realize your your zippers are at opposite ends all right so we're going to clip across the bottom and you will notice that we have these angles here. The panels match up with about the exact sides of this box opening. And then obviously it's a little shorter here. All right, then we're going to take our other lining panel, lay it right sides down on top of that and clip that in place as well across the bottom. Okay, once we have that in place, we're then going to sew only across the bottom here according to the seam allowance in the pattern instructions. So all the way to the ends, um, starting and stopping at both sides. Okay, once that is stitched, we are going to open it up. And then once we flip it over, keep all of the sides, all of the seams pressed one way and top stitch down the whole thing. All right, once you have that top stitched, the next step is there are measurements in the pattern instructions for where you need to mark. So you're gonna measure up, mark a spot, and same on this one, measure from this corner here, mark a spot, and then that's where you're going to attach the corner here to your lining panel. So there's my little mark. I'm just going to add a clip, maybe a couple clips, just because it's a little bit um, bulky and can be a little bit tricky. Okay. I'm going to clip that all the way up. And then grabbing the other piece where that mark is. Again, lining up. The corner of our center divider pocket, pocket with that mark clipping up this way. Now because I did use lining for my center divider pocket, sorry vinyl, since I used vinyl for my center divider pocket, that is making my side seam pretty bulky. So if you have an industrial machine, it, your machine probably won't even bat an eye at it. If you have a domestic, it might struggle a bit, so just be aware of that. Um, you could use a jean needle or a heavier duty, a leather needle, and that should help to get through that. Um, but just know, depending on what fabric you choose, just make sure your machine can handle it. 
Okay, once we have that stitched up, as you can see, it's a little bit, it doesn't want to sit right, but um, it will. <laughs> it will when we get it done. So now what you want to do is you want to just stitch down the side. So there are, I will tell you, there are measurements in the pattern. You're going to be changing your seam allowance. So starting here at the top, and then once you get to this band here, you're going to increase your seam allowance and stitch all the way to the bottom. I will suggest you might want to double, um, do some like all the way back and forth here on the side seam because this is where we're going to be adding the grommet. And if you have that double stitching um, or even triple stitching, if you just go back and forth a couple times, it will help to hold that seam together because we are going to be cutting through the stitch lines. Uh, to install the grommet. So just so you know that you you definitely want to make sure that you backstitch up here at this part. Okay, and then once we get that done, we are going to do the exact same thing to this side where we line up this corner with the mark here on the side. Same here and do the same process for the other side. All right, once you have both sides sewn together, it will be kind of crazy because, you know, it, it pulled those sides in and we have the box corners here, which we haven't finished. Um, I will recommend trimming down the side seam allowance, especially where the divider pocket is. Um, that part can be a little thick. So if you want to trim down the seam allowance on the side, you can. I'm going to just taper off at the top because I do want the full seam allowance here because that's going to help when I um, attach this to the outer side of the bag. So I am just trimming away here and then once I get up to where that top band is I'm just going to angle out. All right now the last thing we need to do for our lining panel is we need to box these corners. So, just grabbing that center right where your seam is. You want to match up your seams. And then since I pressed all of my bottom seams one way, I'm going to press the side seam the other way. Just add a clip here. I'm going to add a couple on the side to help hold it here this way too. Okay. And then you're going to sew across according to the seam allowance in the pattern instructions. And then you're going to repeat the process to close the other um, boxed corner. All right, so once your corners are sewn, the last step here is to just trim back the seam allowance by half. All right. And now you can start to see what the lining of your bag is going to look like. And if you want to test out your snaps, you can do that. Let's see, it's going to be really cute, guys. It's going to be really cute. All right, so this is our lining panel all complete. We are now ready to, um, this is probably the most labor-intensive part of the whole bag. Um, so we can celebrate, <laughs> take a break, have a drink, have a snack, have some chocolate. Um, whatever you like, take the dog for a walk and meet me back here and we will attach or we will, um, put the exterior together. Um, and that goes together really quick. And then we will put the whole thing together, install the grommets and attach the strap and we'll be done. All right. So we are ready to put our exterior panels together. So grabbing your two completed exterior panels and again, you will either have, if you've added embroidery or if you've done some sort of design on yours, um, I've added the center strip here. Um, whichever way you have yours, maybe yours is just one solid piece, um, just make sure your bottom corners are cut out. We are going to take these two panels and line them up right sides together. We're going to clip along the bottom now, usually I would say, um, make sure your seams match up here from the top, you know, from the sides, make sure they match up at the bottom. Uh, but because we are doing 
um, a base on this one, you won't see where those seams match, so you don't have to worry about that so much. So yay for that. <laughs> all right, once you get that clipped across, we are going to sew all the way along this flat edge according to the seam allowance in the pattern instructions. All right, once you have that stitched, we're going to open it up so that it is wrong sides up. We're going to press this open, press the seam open, and depending on um, how you made yours, this could be really easy, or like mine with this seam right here from the multiple layers, it could be a little tricky. So I'm going to, if I can get the pins off of my sticky tape, I'm going to be adding just some double-sided tape. Um, hopefully that will help to hold it so it'll lay nice and flat. Because the goal here is we want our seam allowance to be butterfly open and as flat as we can get it. I know my seam is where where the panels meet. That's where it's going to give me the most the most struggle. So hopefully this will hold it nice. All right, and then if you have one of these little seam rollers, you can just go ahead and just roll over your seam to help encourage it to lay nice and flat. All right, that's not too bad. All right, so now the next step, what we need to do is we're going to flip it over Take it to the sewing machine, and we're just going to top stitch along each side. Now, this is going to be covered by our base, so it doesn't have to be exact, and you don't have to worry about it if your stitches are straight. You just want to stitch down that center seam to help keep this piece here lying nice and flat. Okay, so there is where our seam is nice and flat. I will say if you need to, um, depending on how much structure you want to add to your bag, or um, if you if you just want it if it if your material is more thin and you would like it to have a little more structure you can also add a piece of stabilizer to this bottom so I'm going to add that and I'm going to add another row of stitching you can optionally do this in the same step um, so once you would have flattened the seam out then you could put the stabilizer on top and top stitch down the sides um, that will hold the stabilizer right there in the middle. I'm going to just do add another row of stitching a little bit further out to help hold these sides down as well. So I think I'm just going to put a piece of double-sided tape. I'll just make a sort of an X here to help it to help hold it in place while I'm stitching. And because I'm doing the X shape, if I run over it with my machine needle. Um, it shouldn't be on the sticky tape for too long, so hopefully it won't stick to my needle and gum it up. Okay, but you do want to center this. So you want the same amount of distance here and here, and about the same amount of distance between here and the sides. So I feel like that needs to go over that way, and that needs to go over that way. All right, so now that's gonna hold. I'm gonna take it and I'm just gonna add a second row of stitching kind of down the middle here. So here's my stitching. Like I said, I added that second row. Um, not perfect, doesn't have to be. Its only main purpose is to hold down the stabilizer to the base. Okay, so now that we have that installed, we're going to grab our base piece and it is gonna go right on the top right here. Now this is, again, this is where the instructions will differ for um, non-fraying fabric versus woven fabric. I am using non-fraying, so it is a different measurement. And we are going to put it right on the top here, and you will notice that it does overhang a little bit, um, maybe an eighth of an inch or so. 
and that is fine because once we box these corners that's going to make sure that we have a nice wide base that goes almost the entire width or depth of the bottom of our bag so that's exactly what we want now if you're using a woven your panel is going to be a little bit wider you're going to need to turn under the side by a quarter of an inch all the way down on both sides and then that should give you the piece that is this measurement and you're going to do the exact same thing so again yours will have a little bit of an overhang we are going to put i'm going to put some double-sided tape down the back to help hold it in place and then i'm going to top stitch down the sides and then just like i did for the snap cover for the inside of the bag i added a couple additional rows of stitching i'm going to do the same for this i just want that even though i know it's the bottom of the bag i just want that to be sort of a matching feature so i'm going to top stitch down these long sides and then I'm going to add two more rows of stitching here down the middle. All right so there is my stitching along the bottom. Now we are ready to put this together. I love that after all of the work that we did <laughs> on the lining that it's like oh we are already putting this together. The exterior is kind of a nice you know breath of fresh air when you don't have to do as much work as you did because it's all it's all on the lining side all right so we are lining up the side panels clipping in place all right and then what we're going to do is we are going to sew down the sides According to the seam allowance in the pattern instructions, this is the same seam allowance all the way down for this one. Again, I will recommend probably the first couple inches to just maybe backstitch two or three times and then go all the way to the end and of course backstitching down here as well. Then we are going to box the corners just like we did with the interior. This time we will butterfly open these seams right here, match it with the center seam down here and sew those together and then we are ready to put this thing together. All right, so my base, my seams are stitched. I'm just going to trim that to make sure it's nice and even. All right, and then the last thing we need to do here is trim up the sides. And I will say again, just kind of coming in, going about half seam allowance and then starting up here where I have the back stitching I'm just going to trim out like that and same on the other side All right, so now that that is all together, we are ready to put our our bag together. I was gonna say our stuff. We're ready to put our stuff together. <laughs> all right, so what you wanna do, I'm just gonna put the exterior to the side for a minute. With your lining panel, you're going to reach in and turn it through. You wanna turn it through so that that zipper pocket on the side is now on the outside. So that means that this whole side is feeling kind of all jumbled and squished and stuff in here. You're just gonna tuck your snap cover into that side. That side's a little bunchy, that's okay. We just want the zipper pocket to the outside. Now we're ready to stick it inside of our exterior. Okay, so sticking it in, sliding it in, we are going to butterfly open those seams, like I said, 
matching up that side seam. And this is where we're gonna clip it in place. So lots of clipping. Feel free to use as many clips as you like. You just wanna make sure it holds nice and straight. So on this side, I'm gonna match up the side seams first. And then I'm going to clip it around on this side. Okay, now this side, we're gonna clip it around and this side is, I mean, it can look like what? That's not gonna fit, but it will fit. <laughs> we just got to just go slowly from the sides. Start at one side and just work your way around. And then over here, just when you pull it, it looks like there's way too much, but when you pull it flat, it lines up perfectly. So just add lots of clips to help hold it in place to make sure nothing shifts. Okay. So now once you get that clipped all the way around, we're going to take it to the sewing machine and according to the seam allowance, we're gonna sew all the way around the top of the bag. All right, hopefully you've eaten your Wheaties this morning because now it's the time for a workout. <laughs> so we're gonna reach into our bag, pull the lining out, and through this zipper pocket that we made, and let me find where my zipper pull is. I forgot to open it before I did this, so I had to reach in and make sure that I could get, get it open. All right, so now that you have that opening, you're gonna reach your hand all the way in to the exterior and just start working it through. We're gonna pull the bag through this opening. lost my opening. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna reach my hand in there, kind of poke out the corners for the exterior. Okay, and then I'm going to push the lining inside. It's not all the way pulled out, but it'll be easier to get it to lay how it's supposed to lay if I can get it on the inside here. All right, so this is where now you just gotta start working it. So I will roll the seams between my fingers to try and get them all the way up here to the top. You could also put your hand through the pocket opening again and try to push those out but sometimes I just find it easier just to roll the seams. All right, so once you get it clipped all the way around, then you can go ahead and reach back in your bag, press out, all the seams, make sure everything's laying nice and flat and just how you want. The last thing we need to do, sorry, I was off camera a bit, I think. Um, but the last thing we need to do here is pull out the zipper pocket. Fold it under, I usually fold it under about a half of an inch. That way I know I have a nice good seam to sew on and it also will stay out of the bottom of the bag okay so i'm going to clip that in place 
And then I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and I'm sure you already know what the next step is. We are going to top stitch all the way around the top of the bag. I'm just gonna leave my little cover tucked inside. We're going to top stitch all the way around the top of this bag and then we are going to sew this pocket closed. All right, now that it is top stitched all the way around, you can see what your bag is going to be looking like pretty much. We are just about finished. And again, we've got this little snap cover here that'll go right there on that side. So perfect, it's looking so cute, guys. All right, so the last thing we need to do now is install the grommets on the side. Now there are several different options for grommets you have um, this one is the, the screw-in type. You also have a force fit. Um, sometimes, depending on how thick the seam is, I don't like using a force fit because I feel like it could pop out easily. So I recommend using the ones with screws on them, but you use whichever one you have on hand or whichever one you're comfortable using. So what we need to do now is measure down, and I'd say... You want it fairly close to the top. This is probably, I mean, the center of the hole or where the hole starts is about a half of an inch down from this top of the bag here. So I'm going to draw a line, or draw a circle, I should say, around the inside of the grommet so I know about where the hole is. Okay, so that's what that looks like. Now, one of my testers had the suggestion of adding a couple tack stitches. So just below or just above or both, you could add some tack stitches here and here, and that will help to hold that seam down. It will help so that your seam doesn't start fraying when you cut your hole out, and it will also help hold these together so cutting this opening will be a little easier. Now, of course, if you're using scissors, it'll be a little more tricky versus if you're using um, a hole punch with a, a little mallet that you have um, if you have the correct size. You could also use the mallet and the hole punch um, to get it started and then just trim it around so that it is the right size for your grommet. So I'm going to go ahead and add a couple tack stitches and then um, cut out this hole for the grommet. All right so there is one installed grommet it takes a little bit of work, but you can do it. <laughs> you might just have to go slow and just keep working at it. So let me show you how I did that. So there is my hole. I know it is just a little bit down from where my stitch line is. So on the inside, I don't know if you can see this very well, but inside there's my stitch line. So I know if I start the hole somewhere right around here, I'll be safe and I'll be in that marked spot. So I have this die. It is not quite five eighths of an inch, or maybe, maybe it is five eighths of an inch. I don't know, but whatever it is, it's too small for my grommet. So I'm just going to use my mallet. To try to get a hole started. can be a little tricky. It works a lot easier if you're on a solid surface like a driveway. <laughs> okay, but I'm just gonna show you here. This is just to get the hole started. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just snip this away And then I'm going to do it again to try and get through my exterior. Okay, and I did break through a little bit here. So that's all I need. And what I need to do is just go down to where that stitch or the, the line is that I drew earlier. It's, it's a little tricky doing it 
doing it on the seam, I'm not gonna lie. It's a little thick. So make sure your scissors are nice and sharp. And I'm just snipping right around. Let me see. Oh, there we go. That's why I've got too much stuff going on here. Let me cut that out. There we go. Okay, and I'm sure you can tell that it is not the size that I need it yet. Also because you can still see my stitch on my drawn line, my drawn circle over here. So I'm going to continue to slowly, I can't stress that enough, slowly go around and snip it. Okay, you want your lining and your exterior to be the same size. So you might have to go in and do some little trimming. Okay, once I get it kind of round <laughs> and about out to my drawn line, I will take, here, let me take, where's my screw? Screwdriver, I'll take these little screws out So just for reference. All right, so once I have that, then I'm gonna hold it up and you can see it's almost there, but you can still see there's, for instance, if I bring this down just a little bit here, you can see that I still have a little bit that I need to cut away. So I'm going to go slow. I know it's gonna be around this bottom here and I'm just gonna snip slowly and a little bit at a time because I can go around the hole 500 times if I need to you know but if I cut it too big I mean there's nothing you can do <laughs> I don't know what to tell you if you cut it too big you might have to just like fashion some sort of cover and not do a grommet and do like you know some kind of tab that goes over this way and then have your strap connector up here um, so it's not like your bag is lost if you did do that, but it would be sad for sure. It would be sad. So just make sure you go slow, like I said. I need a little bit more over here. And then I think I'm about ready to put it in. All right, so I'm gonna hold this up, look at it from this side, because what I need to do is I need to be able to make sure that I can get to where the screw holes are. Even if I have to pull the bag back a little bit, I think that'll be good. Um, what I don't want to happen is, like I said, the hole to be too big, and then your um, material is pulling through. That's the other thing. Your material will start to pull through the grommet. And then, so you'll have like a raw hole and your grommet. And that would not be fun either. All right, so this is, like I said, this is like the trickiest part. Probably the part that'll give you the most struggle. Just go slow. There we go. Now I got in the hole. All right, and you can see, I maybe still could trim a little bit more, but I'm going to take my chances. I'm just trying to like get that hole started for that screw so that it can get through the vinyl. There we go. Now this one, same, you can see that white vinyl right there. I'm just trying to start that hole. Take my final screw. There we go. All right, so both of my grommets are now installed. There and there. All right, now the last thing we need to do let me put my snap cover on there. 
We need to grab our O-rings and we're going to put one in each side. There we go. So we got our O-rings on and now grabbing our strap. Go ahead and connect your strap to the O-ring. And ta-da, your bag is done. Oh my gosh. Okay, let me um, clean off my table a little bit and then I'll show you guys the finished product. Here it is from the top. You have your strap. And I will, obviously for me, I love a good crossbody. So I will make mine longer so I can use it as a crossbody. Here it is from the side with your grommets. The other side, here's your base. And then on the inside, you open it up and you have your zipper pocket here. So you have a nice pocket there. And then you have your center divider pocket here with a nice little pocket there in the middle. And then obviously your snap cover. And if you're using a magnetic snap, it should be real easy because it just wants to go there anyway. So there it is. There is the Ellie Bucket Bag by K. Dale Handmade. Guys, I hope you really enjoyed this video tutorial. Thank you for joining me. Thank you so much for supporting me, um, for getting my patterns, and for supporting me on social media, on my YouTube channel, and in my Facebook Makers group. I really appreciate you guys. I'm really having a lot of fun um, interacting with everybody and just seeing what everybody makes. So hopefully you enjoy this pattern as much as I do. It's a little bit more of a, um, like, like a more detailed pattern for me. So let me know what you think. I think it turned out really neat and I think it's a great addition to my um, pattern collection. So yeah, this is the Ellie bucket bag. Guys, again, thank you so, so much. And I appreciate you and go sew something fun.